study estimates if babies born in the U.S. over one year were breastfed as recommended, the country could save $12 billion in health care costs alone. Despite the proven health benefits, Delaware's breastfeeding numbers have dipped. But state health leaders aren't worried, at least not yet. These new moms are gathered together for one reason, to work on their breastfeeding relationships with their babies. In the very beginning, um, my daughter was not able to latch onto the breast, so she wasn't able to get the milk flowing. Mom Stephanie Powers says for the first few days of little Tallulah's life, she just cried and cried at the breast. You feel like you're being a bad mom because you're not able to feed your, your child. Um, or that something in you is, is broken. Powers sought help from lactation consultant Katie Madden here at the birth center in Wilmington. Madden, who's helped more than 500 women nurse their babies successfully, leads the breastfeeding support group every Friday afternoon. So when you're pregnant, you're thinking, yeah, breastfeeding is the right thing. But when you're faced with my baby's losing too much weight, and I need to give some formula, my baby's not taking the breast, do I introduce a bottle? To be in that moment and have to make that decision is psychologically very difficult. That stress could be one contributing factor behind Delaware's declining breastfeeding numbers. Compiled by the CDC, the state's most recent breastfeeding report card shows dips across the board compared with 2012. That 2013 report card is a reflection of 2010 data. In other words, that survey was completed in, in 2010. And a lot of the progress that we've made as a state in the initiatives we've been able to put in place have taken place since then. Delaware Division of Public Health Director Dr. Carol Rattay says new numbers are due out soon. She suspects the data will positively reflect the state's efforts. Since 2010, Rattay says the number of low-income moms in the state's Women, Infants and Children program now choosing to breastfeed has doubled. African American women tend to be half as likely, for example, to breastfeed compared to white and Hispanic women. And low income women tend to be a lot less likely to breastfeed compared to women who have a higher income. And so using the WIC program is a great way to reach some of those more vulnerable populations. The majority of the state's hospitals are also well on their way to becoming what's called baby friendly, meaning maternity practices in the hospital are supportive of breastfeeding. Christiana is one of just 89 hospitals nationwide to receive federal dollars towards earning the certification. It's a very uh, daunting task to become baby friendly certified. We've trained over 450 staff and being the largest birthing hospital in the tri-state area with 6,500 deliveries a year, we'll take any resources we can get. Madden is less concerned about the statewide drop from 2012 to 2013 and more concerned about moms who start breastfeeding and quit months later. You can get off to a great start and then you encounter going back to work. That's a huge hurdle. You get off to a great start and then we start solids and we have to integrate that. We have behavioral issues. So throughout the duration of breastfeeding, there's a psychological strain um, and that's something that we're really not addressing and most people aren't aware of. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends breastfeeding for at least 12 months. To get there, Madden says support is key. Breastfeeding is a really nice opportunity to learn at an early stage that this isn't going to be easy, but it's going to be totally worth it. Katie Madden is hosting the second annual Big Latch On in Newark on Saturday to kick off World Breastfeeding Week. The event brings breastfeeding women together to simultaneously latch their babies. Last year, Delaware moms accounted for 82 of the more than 14,000 latches worldwide. For information, go to Katie's website, balancedbreastfeeding.com.